Alrighty guys, welcome, welcome. This is your host, ID Jester. So this is going to be uh, kind of a, probably a longer video, but I'm going to be introducing something that I've worked on and off of for a long time uh, with Payoff Pitch Baseball. So some of you know, if you've been on my channel for a long time, uh, back in the day uh, when I first got into Payoff Pitch, I was creating some different charts and stuff for Payoff Pitch to use and um, like them and uh, decided to continue with them. And I've been paying a lot of payoff pitch. So I've been working on kind of updating my charts and stuff for payoff pitch. So uh, payoff pitch is kind of my favorite baseball game out there, favorite baseball system. I love, love, love my cards that I've ordered through the company, and they are super, super good. If you guys do not own Payoff Pitch Baseball, you would do yourself a favor by ordering a season or two just to check out the cards and see the quality and the value you get for your money. So I highly recommend you do that um, and uh, see for yourself. Anyways, if you enjoy Payoff Pitch uh, and you enjoy the system and the game and stuff, um, which I do, the, one of the cool things about it is there's many different ways to play. You can play with the fast action cards by themselves. All the information is on the fast action cards. Uh, you can just flip your cards and go through that. Again, I would highly order, I would highly recommend that you order a fast action deck through the uh, website. And uh, that way you'll have a printed awesome copy of the Fast Action cards. And uh, you can play that just uh, the whole game with just the Fast Action cards. There are also uh, some charts and dice. You can use the charts and dice system, uh, which works out very well as well. Or you can use a combination of both, uh, which is uh, using your dice and then also your Fast Action cards for some of your results that you don't want to look up. Uh, for me, the only kind of um i would like to see more out of payoff pitch is actually using a lot of the players stats and ratings that are out there uh, they do use quite a bit of the stats and ratings with the different charts and stuff uh, but i've been trying to find a way to kind of streamline that a little bit so that way uh, you don't have to look up as much charts uh, to get those player results so Everything that I'm doing is obviously uh, a work in progress, so it's not a finished project. Some of the numbers may be adjusted here or there, uh, or you, I might find that uh, something works better, or it's just not um, working the way I had it intended it. But I want to show you guys uh, my little charts here, and the way I've designed them is kind of a... Uh, so you can print them out and then you can just uh, print them on like uh, start uh, cardstock paper uh, and then, uh, you know, cut them out and then have them there at your game. That way, anytime uh, you need one, you can just reference the different cards uh, for the different, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, different plays or different situations that come up in the game. So they might look a little confusing at first, but after you get the hang of it, you can see that a lot of the results that you look at um, are going to be very common or very similar between the different cards. So once you understand uh, what all the different numbers and everything represents, then uh, you can take that information and carry it on and uh, move forward. So uh, I've got several we're going to look at here. And basically, you know, when uh, when you got a single, uh, one of the, f the hard or what are the... Um, uh, it's not hard, but one of the uh, the things you have to determine is whether the runner goes from to fur uh, to second base. If there's a runner in first, and you get a single, and determining whether the runner goes to second base and stops or goes to third base and on. And like I said, you can use the fast action cards, you can use the different charts out there, whatever. I'm just trying to streamline it a little bit for myself, and I thought maybe other people would be interested in uh, checking this out for themselves. Again, this is going to be a work in progress till I test it out and run, uh, you know, some games with it and figure out, you know, do the numbers need to be adjusted slightly here or there uh, to find out. But I'm trying to stay as true to the 
base payoff pitch values as I can. So runner in first and you get a single. So we're going to determine whether the runner is going to go to second and stop or runner goes to third. And all of this or most of these charts are based upon the different stats that are on the player card. So if we actually bring up a player card, we will use Jose Reyes as an example. So here's a copy of the Jose Reyes card here. You see there's lots of different stats and information on this card. And one other thing I'm trying to do with this is to put more of the different stats back into the game and let the stats determine what happens as the result without having to roll on multiple different charts and stuff like that to try and figure it out to kind of streamline it and make it quick and play. So just giving you another variation that you can use uh, for your payoff pitch, whether you want to use the fast action deck or the dice or a combination thereof. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, go through each one of these and kind of talk about them really quickly. And then uh, you'll get to see them play tested as I play through the 2018 Atlanta Braves payoff pitch replay. We're currently in game number eight. So uh, if you've watched the first eight games of that, we won't obviously have these charts in there. But I'll be introducing them starting with the next game. Uh, probably starting a game nine or ten or whatever the next game happens to be that I broadcast. So if you guys want to come check that out, feel free to do so. All right, so uh, again, everything's going to be based upon, and most of these charts are based upon the speed of the runner. So the base running of the, um, of the uh, person that's on the base. So if we have uh, Jose Reyes is on first and the net uh, New York Met steps up and gets a single, well, how are we going to determine if he goes from first to second or first to third? Well, we can easily flip off a fast action card and that'll tell us the result. Um, and it doesn't take into consideration the arm. Uh, it doesn't take into consideration whether it was hit to left field or right field, or it doesn't take into consideration uh, what kind of play it was or how fast the runner was or anything like that. So all I'm doing is trying to take the information from the base uh, payoff pitch game and kind of bring back in a lot of the stats. Everything is based upon the stats that are given for the actual players. So in this case, we're going to find out, is Jose Reyes fast enough to run from first base to third base? And it's going to be based upon his run rating and then there's going to be some modifiers that are going to adjust it up or down. So over here on the left-hand side, we have wheel, we have patient, we have tough, we have in play. We all should know what those are. Those are your results that come off of the different player cards. So if the if the person on uh, the person at bat gets a wheelhouse check, uh, and it ends up being a single, say uh, you know whoever's up rolls uh, you know first base at a wheelhouse check. Uh, so that's going to be a single off the wheelhouse. So whoever's running is going to get a plus two to their their run rating. Uh, so that way, you know, obviously better pitch, better result, better hit gives you a better chance to advance. Patient is going to give you a plus zero. A tough is going to give you minus one. And in play is going to give you a plus one. Then, of course, we're going to take the arm rating of the fielder it was hit to. And we're going to adjust it up or down based upon the arm rating of the player that's out there in left field or right field or center field based upon where the ball was actually hit. So uh, in this situation, you know, if they have an arm rating of three or four, remember, arm ratings lower is better. Oops. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's one of the the uh, interesting parts of this game. Most results, the higher is better, but uh, sometimes lower is better. In this case, arm rating three or four gives them a minus two. Arm rating of five or six gives you a minus one. And an arm rating of seven is average, so you get a zero for that. Arm rating of eight or nine gives the plus one, and an arm rating of 10 gives you a plus two. All of these are going to be based upon your, again, run rating. And you're simply gonna take your base running, you're going to add and subtract all your modifiers, and you're going to get your final results. So if we we're in this situation, we're going to say it was hit to, uh, of course, it also depends on where it's hit. So if it's hit to left field, minus two. If it's hit to center field, plus zero. And if it's hit to right field, you get a plus two. So we'll say it's hit to right field. Jose Reyes is on first base. We'll just uh, say the um, arm rating for the uh, right fielder is an eight. And so uh, it was hit off of a uh, patient result 
And let's just see how long it takes to calculate this up. So we got a uh, run rating of 6. It was hit to uh, right field, so we're going to get a plus 2. So that gives us an 8. And it was a patient result, which is 0, and an arm rating of 8. So he's going to be a plus 1. So he's actually going to be a 9. So this results, or all the results on this, from, on this whole on this whole chart is based upon a 20 uh, 2d10 which is uh, everything that's obviously built into the system uh, and I hope I didn't stop that okay good uh, so I'm using uh, six siders and I'm using four uh, ten siders just like they have in payoff pitch if you're using the dice version and uh, so at this point um, he's he has a one two nine now um, I'm using the 10 sided dice. One is the very lowest number, and zero is the very highest number. So it doesn't go zero to nine, it goes one to 10. Uh, and you can see there's some modifiers down here. You know, take your base running, add or subtract all your modifiers. If the roll is less than or equal to, he's safe, or if it's greater than, he is out. If you roll a zero, then you're going to roll it to the second die, and if it's actually higher, then the error rating of whoever was making the play, then it's an actual error on them. So let's explain what all that means. So we calculated this all up. He has a one, uh, let's see, it was a six, uh, seven, eight, nine. So that's how easy it is. Pretty easy to calculate this all up. So he has a one to nine chance of making it. Uh, and um, he will then decide, you know, he automatically goes to second base. And then at that point, the uh, offensive team decides if he's going to send the runner. And he says, yes, I'm going to send the runner. So he's going to send the runner to third base. So that play, it puts it back on the defensive team. All right, do you throw to try and throw him out? Or do you just toss the ball back in? If you try to throw him out, okay, if you decide, okay, we're going to try and throw him out at third base, then um, if the second die is... Um, less than or equal to the uh, the trailing runners base running then they're going to take the base on the throw so there is some uh, I think it brings in a little bit more strategy and of course I'm making this a lot more complicated than it sounds uh, or maybe I'm making it harder to sound than it really is so uh, we'll just see <laughs> I'm trying to explain to it so I don't get like 50 questions well I don't understand what what does this mean what does that do so basically all you're going to do in just about every chart is you're going to take the run rating at the person that's running and you're going to add and subtract modifiers and you're going to get a result and then you're going to say yes he's going to go an extra base uh, or not and then uh, you're going to determine whether or not uh, you know the defensive players are going to try to throw him out or not so let's give another example here let's say this one's going to left field and the arm is a seven all right so Jose Reyes is at first base. He's got a run rating of six. It went to left field, so he's a minus two, so he's down to a four. And a seven arm is a zero. So it's a one, two, three, or four chance if you want to stretch it from, you know, going to second to go to third base. And if you decide to do it, uh, then the defensive team has to decide whether or not they're going to try and throw you out or they're going to just toss the ball back in and keep your runner that hit the single to a single. Because if they throw it here, and you roll less than or equal to, uh, then he could take that extra base if the second die is uh, equal to or less than his base running. So, uh, so that's that's pretty much. Uh, if you look at runner uh, single um, or runner to home on second base on a single, or a runner on first and you hit a double, you're basically all three of these cards are exactly the same. But the you know. The wheel, the patient, the tough, the input, the arm ratings are all the same. The only thing that's going to be different is your modifiers uh, for where it was hit. And, of course, you get a modifier of plus two for a hit and run. Uh, and you notice that each of these say, if there's no throw, then no advance. Uh, if there's a throw, then the base runner um, advance on a roll of less than or equal to the base running. So... Brings a little bit more um, strategy kind of back into the game a little bit uh, based upon whether or not you're going to actually take the runner in. And this way, it makes it a little more important on who and their different stats. 
Uh, you don't ever, you know, in, in normal payoff pitch, you don't ever have to pull a runner out and replace him with a pinch runner because not a lot of the actual stats come into play in vanilla payoff pitch. Uh, so I'm just trying to add more of the actual stat value for the different players uh, into the game. So if we have uh, as Drupal Cabrera, he has a run of five, and let's say he's on second base, and uh, Cespedes hits a single, let's find out uh, where it's going to go. So we're going to say this is a, uh, it's a ground ball, and it's going out into left field. Uh, you can see he's on second base. He's got a run rating of five. It went to left field, so it's a plus one. And we'll say it came off a wheelhouse check, so he gets a plus two, so it's five, six, seven, eight. So he's a one to eight to make it. Uh, we'll say the uh, left fielder has an arm of six, so it's a minus one, so it's down to a one to five, um, one to six, sorry, one to six. So uh, he decides he's going to go home, so then you just simply roll the dice again, and you're going to look at the first dice which is going to be your color dice to find out. So one to six, he's actually going to be safe. A seven, eight, or nine, he's going to be out. And on a 10, if it happens to be a 10, then it's a possible error. What you're going to do is look at the second dice. And if this dice is greater than the error rating on whoever was throwing the ball, then they uh, th threw it wild or overthrew or whatever, and it's an error on the throw. So... Uh, so he's actually thrown out at home by whoever was out there in that field because he decided to go. He had a one to six chance and an eight was rolled. So he was thrown out at the plate. Same thing goes for a double runner to uh, home. Uh, basically the same. These three are very, very similar. Again, all you're going to do is you have different modifiers based upon where it was hit to. Uh, and you're going to uh, have the same results for everything there. So again, if it's a, uh, if the original dice is equal to or less than the rating, uh, then they're safe. And then you're going to look at the second dice to see what the result is. And if it's uh, equal to or less than their base running, uh, then they're going to advance on the throw. If it's higher than, then they don't advance. So that's as simple as that. Uh, if you roll a 10, let's see if I can get this to roll a 10. Uh, nope. Nope. Of course, it's going to take me forever to get it to roll a 10. I did it in practice and it came up like first time. So there's a 3. There's a 2. There's a 0. All right. So if a 0 is rolled... It's going to be an out unless the throw is an error. So we're going to say that the error range for the player out in you know left field in this situation uh, has an error of, uh, say, four. You look at the second dice, which is a six. If it's higher than their error range, then instead of an out, it's going to be an error. So that's as simple as that is. Hopefully I'm explaining this all okay for you. All right, so let's go to base stealing. So again, these three very common uh very easy to determine. Uh, so let's go to base stealing. Base stealing is basically all you're going to do is uh, you're going to be slightly different here. Um, the way I normally do it in the game is you roll against the pitcher's hold rating. If it's less than or equal to their hold rating, then they can get the jump and they can try to steal base. And then you would use the fast action cards uh, based upon the catcher's arm and the base uh, stealing ability and calculate that up and figure out what kind of result that would be if it's a very good result or an excellent result or normal a fair or poor uh, so basically all i'm doing with this one is i'm saying you're going to take your steel rating uh, steel rating of a is going to give you an eight steel rating of b is going to give you seven steel rating of c is going to give you six steel rating of d is a five and a steel rating of f is a four all right. What you're going to do is you're going to get those numbers instead of your base running. Now you're going to get your steal rating, right? So in this case, if it's as Drupal Cabrera, he is going to have not a run rating of five now, but he is going to have a steal rating of seven. So that's his base, and all the modifiers come off of that base number of seven. So you're going to take the catcher's arm. Again, if the catcher's arm is a one, you're going to get a minus two. Catcher arm a two, you get a minus one. Catcher arm a three is 
is average, so you get a zero. Catcher armor four plus one because he's not as good. Pitcher armor five is plus two. So we'll say the catcher is an armor four. So as Drupal Cabrera has a rating of seven plus one is eight. So now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to test and see whether or not you get a good jump against the pitcher or bad jump. So you're going to take the 2d6 and you're going to roll it and compare it against the hold rating of the pitcher. So what I'm going to do here is bring up a pitcher card, if I can find one quickly. Pitcher card, hello? Uh, no, that would not be a pitcher card. Ah, come on. All right, should have had a pitcher card. I didn't think I was going to need one, but I guess I do. All right, let's just go and find uh, San Francisco, and let's find uh, Matt King. Sure, here's a pitcher card. All right, so let's say as Drupal Cabrera is trying to steal against uh, Matt King here. So Matt King has a hold rating of eight. So he's got a hold rating of eight. So you decide you're going to steal with as Drupal Cabrera, and he's going to roll against the hold rating of the uh, pitcher. Right, and he rolls a six. So he got the jump. He could decide to go or not go on that, right? And you know his number is a seven plus one is an eight. So one to eight, he's going to be safe. A nine, again, he's out. A 10, he's out unless there's an error, right? So uh, pretty easy to figure that out. He's got about an 80% chance of making it, all right? Now let's roll again against the pitcher here because I want to show you a couple other things. Uh, this time he rolls an 8, so he's okay, because Mark Kane is a hold rating of 8 as well. Uh, let's see, there we go, there's a nice result. So there's a 10. So 10 is higher than the 8, so that is a bad jump. He gets a bad jump. Now notice, you get a bad jump, but if you roll 10 or higher, you must go. So you don't have a choice, you must try to steal. And you notice you get a minus 2 if you get a bad jump. So instead of a 1 to 8, he's only going to be a 1 to 6. He's going to be successful on this. And then, of course, if you roll a 12 on your steal attempt or your uh, your lead attempt, it's going to be a pickoff attempt, right? So uh, we'll say in this case, he rolled a 10. So it's a bad jump. He has to go. So he has a uh, 8 minus 2 is a 6. So he does. You're going to look at the first dice. Again, 1 to 6, he's safe. 7, 8, 9, 10, he's out. If you roll a zero, though, there can always be that error. Same thing as all the other charts. You're going to see there's a very a lot of similarities all between the different charts. So that's how the base stealing works. Pretty simple. Again, instead of using the base running, though, we're going to be using the base stealing ability. We're going to give them a number. They're going to have modifiers that are going to adjust these numbers up or down. Then you're going to determine whether or not you're going to uh, tr try and get the jump. If you try to get the jump and you roll 10 or higher, you have to go. Uh, if you, you know, let's say this is a, uh, let's see if we can get this to roll a nine would be awesome. No, that's an 11. How about a nine? Nine would be super good. Oh, that's a 10 again. Nope. I need a nine here. That's an 11. That's a seven. There's a nine. All right. So let's say this is the roll. So he has a uh, hold rating of eight. This is a nine, so it's higher than the eight, so he didn't get a good jump, but he doesn't have to go. Of course, I would not be rolling the the, uh, the ten-siders, you know, at the same time. I would roll just the six-siders, determine whether or not you get the jump or not, and then decide whether or not you're going to steal. So, uh, so that's pretty much singles for going to first to third, singles, runners to home, doubles, or first to home, and base stealing, very similar. So we've got a couple other things. Uh, we've got the sacrifice fly out. So another thing that comes into play a lot of times is when you got a runner at first or second or third and determining whether or not they can actually, you know, uh, tag up and move up a base. Uh, so this, uh, oops, let's move this out more into left, uh, right field. Move this one a little bit more out into left field, right? Uh, So, um, mm -hmm. I guess it, it, it's not going to matter, right? <laughs> uh, just trying to slide it a little bit over. So, uh, here's your sacrifice fly again. All we're going to do is we're going to take the base running of the player, 
All right, we're going to take the base running. Oh, that's the pitcher. We need the base runner. Here we are. So we're going to take the run rating of the player, and we're going to add and subtract modifiers, get a number, and figure out whether or not we want to try and set. Uh, we want to try to uh, tag up on the sacrifice fly out. So if the ball, uh, if you've got a runner at second and he's trying to go, or let's we'll start at first. If you've got a runner first and he's trying to go to second on the sacrifice fly out, you can see if it's the left field, it's a minus two to your base running. Center field is minus four. Right field is a minus two. Uh, same thing, you're going to have the same arm rating, the same wheel, patient, tough, and in play results that you have on everything else, right? So once you learn these numbers, you're going to you're going to be able to pull them off the top of your head really, really quickly. So, again, you're going to just take the base running of the player and determine, let's say it's a uh, fly ball to center field. Right. So can he tag up and go? Well, he's a five. He's trying to go from first to second. He gets a minus four. So that is brings him down to a run rating of one. By the way, the lowest number you can ever, ever have is a 1, and the highest number you can ever, ever have is a 9. So if all your modifiers equal like a minus 2, you still can be safe on a 1. Or if all your modifiers are a 13, you can still only have the highest of a 9, and that way you're always out in a 10, and thus, of course, they make an error. So... Um, so obviously he's a five base running and it's hit to center field chance of him moving up, you know, not, not going to risk it probably. Right. Cause it's going to be a one. Right. Uh, so if you got a runner at second, same thing, we'll say a Jubal Cabrera is on second and it's hit to center field. It's a plus zero. He's a five. Does he want to tag up? Depends on whether or not it was, uh, you know, if it was hit off a wheel check or a tough check, or if the arm rating of the, uh, center fielder, we'll say the arm rating is a six. And it was hit off a patient. Uh, so the center field is a zero. Patient is zero. Six is a minus one. So he's going to be down to one to four to try to tag up. Again, one, two, three, or four on the dice. He would be safe. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. He would be out. Unless, of course, you roll the zero. You're going to always look at the second dice to find out whether or not they make the error on the throw. So that's the sacrifice fly. Again, very similar arm ratings. You got your different hit results here. You're going to just take the base running. You're going to add and subtract your modifiers. If it's less than or equal to, he's safe. If it's greater than, he's out. Uh, same thing. If there's no throw, then there's no advance by the secondary runner. Uh, if there is a throw and you roll a zero, then you're going to look at the second die. If the second die is higher than the error rating, then an error happens on the sacrifice fly. All right, sacrifice bunt. Uh, so, uh, you know, sacrificing, same thing we're going to do with the stealing rating. So stealing and sacrificing, very similar. You're going to take your sacrifice bunt rating. You're going to take your bunt rating. And for as Drupal Cabrera here, he is a bunt of D. So he would have a rating of six. Then you're going to take your bunt rating and subtract your modifiers. And then if it's less than or equal to, it's a sacrifice. If it's higher than his sacrifice rating, then the lead runner is thrown out. So it's a bad bunt, right? Again, if it's a zero, you're going to look at the second die. If it's higher than the player making the check, then it's going to be an error uh, on the player that's making the check. So you're going to get your number, which is going to be your base rating, and then you're going to add and subtract your modifiers. But the only difference here is instead of based upon the wheelhouse, the patient, the tough, and the in play, because there is none of those in a bunt, what you're going to be checking is the defensive range of whoever makes the play. So a 1-2, it goes to the pitcher. A 3-4 is the catcher. A 5 is the third baseman. And a 6 is the first baseman. So you're going to look at, you're going to roll your six-sided dice. And we got a 1. So it goes to the pitcher. All right. Uh, and you're going to, um, you know, find your rating. So as Drupal Cabrera is a D. So he's got a 6. Uh, and you're going to find out the range of the pitcher because it went to the pitcher. And because pitchers and catchers are always considered in, there's a minus two defense in. You get a minus two to your check. So he's going to have a five. Uh, let's see. He is a D6, right? Minus two because it went to a player that's in. So he's down to a four. You're going to check the range of the pitcher and you're going to add subtract that. And then you're going to roll to find out if the, the sacrifice bunt was successful or not. Uh, again, this one isn't going to determine whether he is out. This is going to determine whether he is a sacrifice. 
Um, and if it's higher, then they're actually going to make the player moving from, you know, either first to second or second to third, depending on how, who is on base. They're going to get the lead runner out. Uh, and a bunt for hit, very similar to a sacrifice bunt. Same thing, you're going to get your bunt rating, right? But this time, uh, you're actually going to use it uh, based upon your run rating, all right? So you're going to take your run rating, you're going to add and subtract your modifiers. So if I'm trying to bunt for a hit, I'm going to use my, uh, I'm going to use my base running and then determine how good a bunter I am. So I'm a D bunter, so I'm going to get a minus three to my run rating of two. So obviously, as Dribble Carrera, not going to be bunting for a hit very often because he's already starting off with a, a result of two and then add or subtract the range uh, wherever he hits it to, minus two if they're already in. So not a very good chance of uh, doing a uh, sacrifice or a bunt for a hit. If we look at Jose Reyes, Jose Reyes is a pretty good runner, but terrible bunter, right? So he's going to start off with a run rating of six. He's going to subtract his four because he's an F bunter. So he's down to two again. So not very good at sacrificing or bunting for a hit. Again, you're going to roll the D6 to determine whether it was bunt to the pitcher, the catcher, the third base, or the first baseman. Now, of course, if the defense calls corners in and you try to bunt for a hit, then everybody's going to be considered in because... Pitchers and catchers are always uh, in, considered in. And then the corners, the first baseman and the third baseman, would be in because the defense called corners in. So you're going to get a minus two to trying to bunt for a hit. Now, maybe it might work for you. It might not. Uh, so that's, you know, that's nine of our results. You can see very similar between the different cards. I try to keep things as standard as possible. Again, this is a work in progress. Some of the numbers might adjust up or down. Um, based upon feedback or testing and finding things out. So last thing is the ground out advance, All right? Uh, so uh, that's kind of important to find out who advances when someone grounds out. So uh, first to second, we're using basically the system that's built into payoff pitch. If the role is less than or equal to both the, pit, uh, the pitcher and the batter's double play, then it's a double play. If it's less than or equal to both of them, so in this case, double play of eight off of Matt Kane, double play of six off of Jose Reyes. So if it's a two, three, four, five, or six, it's going to be a double play, right? If you got a runner on second trying to go to third on the ground out, well, you're going to take his base running and you're going to add and subtract modifiers. The only modifiers that come into play are wheel, patient, tough, and in play, and where it was hit to. So if it's hurt to first base, second base, shortstop, or third base, pitcher or catcher, you're going to add or subtract those numbers and find out whether or not you can advance or not. Again, this is going to be, the number is going to be less than or equal to, when you roll, you can advance. If you don't, it's not necessarily an out, it just means that you don't advance, you don't try to go for it. Uh, the only time you would be out is if you went for it, right, and... Um, no, I'm sorry. If, once you roll the dice, you're not going to uh, go for it. You're either going to go for it and not go for it, right? Uh, and see, they're going to find out whether or not you can make it or not on the ground out. Uh, and so there you go. So that, and then of course, if you're going uh, from third base to home on a ground out, uh, if the defense is in, you get a minus two, and then of course, based upon where it was hit. Uh, you would get the result. Um, I would just use a six-sided dice. One, two, three, four, five, six tells you which position it's grounded out to. If it doesn't tell you, like this one here is a G6, obviously you know it's a short. Uh, you know, it's a 42, then it was ground out to the first baseman, right? So it, I think payoff pitch tells you. But if you're not sure, just roll 1D6, and, it would t and you would have which position on a six-sided dice. Uh, that works out really well. So there you go. So you got the ground out advance, uh, you know, find out whether or not the runners are going to be able to, you know, go off on a ground out advance or not. So those are kind of the eight different results that I think come up pretty regularly. Obviously, when you get a triple, it doesn't matter because everyone on the bases gets cleared off because it's a triple or a home run, obviously, is the same thing. So uh, the other thing I would highly recommend is probably like a little card like this or something 
where you're going to take these very important stats and you're going to place them on your cards now, right? So that way you have a, like a reference card instead of trying to flip through and trying to find out all the different players results. So, you know, what I would do is I would just say, okay, this is position one. It's the catch or it's the pitcher. And, you know, he's got a, uh, well, let's look at, um, let's look at, let's look at our guy here. No, that's not the right one. This one. So Matt Cain is a uh, C1, right? So I would just type in, he's a C1, right? And then, uh, oops, that's not a one. That's an explanation point. So, you know, position number one is a C1. And then I would put, like in parentheses, I would put their run rating in there. Uh, where is his... Um, <laughs> Not sure that are actually listed on the pitcher's card, right? A run rating. I could be wrong on that. Uh, run rating. Could be just missing it. Double play injury, hold rating, fatigue, fielding. He's going to use right handed card number two. He's a sacrifice a C. Yeah, I don't think they actually have. I think they just list all pitchers as like a run rating of six. I think I could be wrong on that. Somebody could. Somebody's gonna let me know on that. But anyways, I would put their. I would put their uh, ratings in there like that. But what I would do for your obviously for your outfielders is I would do something like this. If I uh, let's see if we can find an outfielder. There we go. Jose says has uh, yeah. Cespedes, right? Uh, let's say he's playing in left field. He's going to be a C24, right? <clears throat> so it's going to be, he's going to be a C2-4 because his arm is a 4. And he's going to run, his run rating is going to be a uh, run rating is a 6, right? I wouldn't bother writing down like... Um, like his bunt rating or anything like that, because you're going to have the card out. So he's got a run rating of six, right? So then anything in parentheses, you know, is going to be their uh, uh, the run rating. If anything with a dash is going to be their arm rating. So actually, I would what I would do is I would not put like a dash four because I would al I would already have it calculated what his arm rating is going to be. And if we just look at any one of these uh, charts here, uh, arm rating of four is a minus two, right? So I would put down, he's a C2 minus two. So you, oh, so you know, uh, yeah, anybody running on him, it's going to be a minus two to their, to their, uh, to their run rating checks for him. Uh, so let's see, uh, so that's Cespedes, and we'll say Curtis Granderson's in center field. He's a C55 and a run rating of six. A C55 run rating is six. C5, 5, so I'm going to find his arm. He's a 5, so again, a minus 1. C5. So he's going to be a C5. He's going to be a minus 1. And he's a run rating of 6. So if you just put all, you know, your 9 starters down on this little card, you can, put, you can fill in their names, you know. I would just print these out. I would create you like a little cheat sheet. It's only going to take you a minute because you're going to have the cards already, you know, in your lineup positions. Just spend the time and just put that information in so that way you can just have this card uh, right there when you play the game and uh, you're ready you're ready to go on that and plus you'll have all the different information for everyone and I might just uh, I might just create a little card here for my uh, for my next game that I'm going to be doing online here <clears throat> and um, and that way you, you guys can uh, kind of see it as well so if you guys have any questions about this or thoughts or comments, whatever, just let me know. Again, uh, I know this is going to be kind of a long episode, but uh, again, all you're going to do is you're going to take the base running, you know, base running, your base running, you're going to add and subtract your modifiers. It should only take you, you know, arm raining. I mean, you know, it's, it looks pretty complicated, but just remember, you know, your arm rating of seven is average. So anything lower than that's going to give you, uh, you know, it's going to be harder to run on. Anything higher than that's going to be easier to run on. 
uh, just write down those numbers, one, minus 2 to plus 2. Uh, patient, we, uh, wheelhouse, patient, tough, and in play, again, uh, plus 2, minus 1, uh, which, one are, which one are they and everything. But after you do it about 10, 15 times, you're going to have those memorized, like, instantaneously. So all you have to really do is go, okay, this guy, he is trying to go from first to third. He's got a run rating of, or, yeah, he's got a run rating of 6. He went to center field. That's a zero. It was off a, a tough one, so he's down to a five. And the arm is a seven, so that's a zero. So it's a one to five. No, I'm not going. You know, so it, does, it shouldn't take you very long, especially uh, if you print out each of these. There's only two pages or three pages if you want to use my little cheat sheet cards here, whatever you want to call them. Three pages. Uh, you just print these out on cardstock. You cut them out. And you just keep them by your play area. And when this situation comes up, about the first 10 times, you'll just have this up and ready to go. And you just look at the modifiers and decide. Sure, it's going to take add a little bit of time to your game. It's not as easy as just rolling on a chart. It's not as easy as flipping a, a, a fast action card and going, you know, okay, let's see, I flip up this card. It's a single. It's a long single in the gap into center field. Runner in first advances one base. Runner in second advances one base plus question mark. So, I mean, you know, I flip up the fast action card. I can get the information right there. But at least what this does is it takes it takes uh, some of the actual stats for the players, the pitchers, the players' stats, and brings them kind of back into the game in a kind of, I'm hoping, a streamlined fashion. Again, it's streamlined because all the results are going to be the same. A wheelhouse check is always going to be a plus two. There's no card that I have. Oops, there is a card because it's because I screwed up and copied the wrong thing here. So just ignore that for a second. Okay, so there's actually no card. <laughs> Somebody was going to point that out, I'm sure. There's no card where a wheelhouse is not a plus two. Every single time a wheelhouse is plus two. And a tough is minus one. Those are those are standard throughout. The arm rating is standard throughout the system. So once you know an arm of eight, it's always going to be a plus one. No matter what you do, it's always going to be a plus one. An arm of five is always going to be a minus one. So it's streamlined because once you know the numbers, uh, you're going to understand them and they're going to be embedded in your head just like a six four three i mean when you first started going oh it's a double play six four three um in the beginning everyone had to think of that go it's a uh, see sort is six and second base is four and first base is a three six so it's going to be six six what, what was it six four right six four three yeah but after you did it like 10 or 12 times, then all of a sudden, oh, it's a 643. Now everyone, I mean, you could do that like in your sleep, 643, 643, 643, right? So uh, that's how you learn and memorize things. Again, the numbers don't change. The only things that are going to change are, you know, sometimes your modifiers. Here's a minus two. This is going to be a plus two. This is going to be a zero. Is it going to be different for a runner on second? Yes, it's going to be different. So maybe the first... 10 or 15 times, you're going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to look at the card. But after a while, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty, pretty ingrained uh, because first to third happens quite a bit. You're going to know, well, if it went to left field, it's going to be a lot tougher to make it there because, uh, you know, um, you have a, uh, you know, minus two because the ball went over to left field. It's going to be easier for them to throw you out. And it's going to be a little bit easier when it's hit the right field. Why is that? Because the ball's, you know, it's hit farther away from where you're headed. So it's easier to get there. Uh, it also is going to streamline it because <clears throat> when I'm going, you know, it's it's an, it's an a 3-3 three, three ball game, top of the eighth. I don't want to risk my guy getting thrown out going to third base if there's no out. So a guy gets me a single, I can just say, oh, I'm going to stop at second. I don't even need to look at the card. I'm just going to stop at second. That's... I'm not even going to risk it at that point, right? So you don't even, you don't even have, to, have to worry about adding and calculating everything up. Uh, you know, and there's only a couple modifiers. Again, a couple, you know, the standard modifiers, pretty similar. Uh, when you look at base stealing, sacrifice bunts and bunts for hits, just a little bit different because you're going to get the result off 
of your chart here, right? So you're going to get your result off the different charts, and um, and then you're going to add your modifiers to your S rating. So you have a steel rating, you have a bunt rating, and of course you have your base running, and that's pretty standard throughout. So that's uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. If you guys want to see it in action, uh, maybe I'll run a live game tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I won't be watching tonight. We're going to the we're going to the neighbor's house, who is a big Cincinnati Reds fan. The Cardinals are playing the Reds tonight, so they're having us over to watch the game. So probably won't be running a game tonight. I might actually run one this afternoon, um, or maybe late at night. I don't know, but sometime this weekend, so that way you guys can see this. Uh, in action, if you uh, are interested in, uh, you know, in seeing what this system can do. Again, uh, there's nothing wrong with the way Payoff Pitch plays to begin with. Uh, there's nothing, you know, you choose to play it however you want to play it. Um, for me, I love playing it with the cards and dice. It's streamlined, it's fast, it's quick, uh, you know, with the fast action cards. But uh, the only problem I have with using the fast action cards and the dice is it just... It doesn't matter if your runner at first is a, a speed burner who's a 10 run or he's a four because you're just flipping up the fast action card and it's just going to tell you a result. It's a single runner at first moves to second or a single runner moves to third uh, or there could be a single runner moves to second plus question mark, which of course then you're going to have to look at the chart to determine whether or not um, that's going to be, and of course, one thing we forgot to mention is a lot of these modifier for hit and run. So obviously if you've got a hit and run on, uh, you are going to get a plus two to your base running on that. Uh, and then of course you have a bad jump minus two. If you're, you know, if you roll and you get the bad jump when you're trying to steal the base, uh, sacrifice bunt rating, uh, defense in minus two, obviously bunt for hit defense in minus two. Ground on advance, it looks kind of complicated, but it's really not because if you're going first and second, we're just going to use the default based in system, uh, going second to third. And of course, uh, one thing I did forget to mention, mention, if the defense is trying for a double play, then it's an auto advance. So if you got a runner at first and second, it's a ground ball to short. You don't have to look and see whether or not the guy's going from second to third because they're going to be trying, you know, in most cases for the double play, right? So if they're going to go try for the double play, then it's going to be, you're going to automatically go second to third because they're, you know, they're going to try and turn two. So you're going to take off. If you get thrown out at third, it's not going to really, it's not going to hurt anything because they're still going to get the out at first or the out at second anyways. So you might as well take off and maybe they'll be stupid enough and try and go for you. Uh, so anytime the defense is trying for a double play, then it's an auto advance. So again, you get a runner first and third. There's one out, and it's ground ball to short. They're going to, you know, they can either try to throw for home, try to catch you there, or they can try for the double play. In most cases, I would think they're going to try for the double play and, um, you know, give up the run if they have to, especially if they're not playing in. If they're trying to play in, then maybe they would try to get you out at home. So, um, so anyways, you know, if, if they are playing in and you decide, um, oh, you know, you're going to check whether or not you're going to go home or not. So that'd be up to the base runner first to determine, am I coming home? Uh, you know, he'll calculate everything and say yes or no. And then the defense will make a choice. Are we going to try and throw him out or are we going to try for the double play? And in that case, you might have to calculate a few things to figure that one out. This is kind of the most difficultish one of the whole thing, I would guess. Fly ball or singles and runners and all that might seem complicated, but again, I think in the long run, it'll be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty easy once you try it out a few times. So <clears throat> again, this is not for publication yet. It's still a work in progress. Again, some of the numbers might need to be adjusted. Is it too easy to go first to third? I might need to test and find out. Um, is, is the modifiers not high enough? Uh, if, you know, or it, you know, hitting and running, maybe it's a uh, plus three or a plus four as opposed to a plus two. So, well, you know, we're going to try it out and we'll be playing the 2018 Atlanta Braves. Starting with game number eight or nine, uh, we're, we've completed, what do we complete? We've completed game eight, right? 
So if you watch any game after that, you'll be able to hopefully see some of this uh, in in our in our game. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.